As we're all probably well aware now, the fine folks over at Line 6 just recently released their firmware 3.7 for the Line 6 Helix family, the HX Stomp family. What a great update it is. And today we're going to do a very deep dive into probably one of the most exciting new additions, which is the incredible feedbacker effects block that we've received with this update. This is kind of a feedback on demand effects block that's going to allow us to generate various types of feedback with very deep control over it, kind of in the vein of a Digitech Freakout pedal, but actually quite a bit deeper. So without further ado, let's dive into each parameter on this and see exactly what they do and how we can get this working to give us the results we want. Okay, so here we are over in HX Edit. What I have up here is just my little single snapshot preset that is based around the incredible new Brit 2203. <laughs> Loving that amp model. Later in the video, I'll play you the full demo video for my Brit 2203 Line 6 Marketplace preset, which you can grab at the link below if you're so inclined. So we want to add the feedbacker in here. Now, first of all, where do we add it? Well, the suggestion is, is to add it as early in the chain as possible. Where are we going to find it? Well, we're going to find it under the dynamics section. So we come in here and we can go to the dynamics. You'll notice in stereo, it's not there. It's not going to be a stereo effect. So we're going to find it under the mono section of our dynamic section. We can click that on. Now, when it loads up, it loads up bypassed because we don't want that on all the time. It's only going to be on when we want this kind of feedback on demand to come in. Now, a really great way to use this, we're gonna have to assign it to a foot switch, obviously, if we want to utilize this while we're playing. So let's start by doing that. I can right click on this. I can come to bypass assign. I'm gonna put this on foot switch seven. Now, the problem with that is when I go two foot switch seven and press it, it's going to be on. Well, maybe we don't want that to just be continually on, maybe without having to hit it to turn it off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to the bypass controller assign tab. I'll go to where I set foot switch seven to bypass this. I'm going to set the type of foot switch from latching to momentary. And you might ask, well, what does that do? Well, latching means that, and let's just go back to latching for a second here. Latching means that when I press that foot switch, it stays on after I release the foot switch and press it again, it turns off. Momentary means that it's only going to stay on as long as I have that foot switch pressed. As soon as I release that foot switch, it turns off as you can see in the fact that it's grayed out versus the brighter yellow parameters. So that's a momentary switch. So we have that ability now to just control it in a way that's going to be quite intuitive. All right, so what do we have here? We have feedback gain. This is basically gonna be the amount of feedback we have. So if I, if I hit a note or a chord. Hit my foot switch, my momentary foot switch. We see that the feedback fades in and then fades out when I let it go. Works on chords as well. Really nice stuff, works really nice with these settings just as it is. But if I turn this feedback gain down, get a very tiny amount of, of feedback, which might be exactly what you want. Maybe you want something very subtle. Or maybe you want something very dramatic. All right, so we can decide what we want. Let's just go with a moderate setting right now. Now, feedback type is gonna be very interesting. We have a lot of choices here. We can have it so that it does an octave below the note we play. And actually, let's do this. Let's turn this up so we really hear what's going on. Right, I picked a really low note there. So that's cool. If we want that, we can go in unison. That works nicely. We can go an octave up. We can go an octave and a fifth up. We can go two octaves up. 
We can go two octaves plus a third. Two octaves plus a fifth. Two octaves plus a seventh. See, it's really working off of chord tones. Mid solo is going to have the feedback typically start on the highest harmonic below around 500 hertz and then drop down to a lower harmonic as the signal decays. I can give a real natural kind of cool sound. Then we have from high to low, which is going to give typically a highest harmonic below 1200 hertz that then descends into a lower harmonic as the signal decays again. Very cool stuff. Then we're going to have random trigger, which is this is going to basically be new harmonics are going to be selected randomly every time the re-trigger parameter is set to trigger. So that's going to be down here. We have the re-trigger parameter. We'll discuss this when we get down here. I'll show you how you can use that. And then we're going to have random onset. So new harmonics are going to kind of be randomly selected every time there's a new onset or when we hit a new note or hit a new chord or when a new note or chord is detected. Uh, in this case, repeating the same chord could still generate different harmonics. So kind of a more random use, which might be maybe more realistic for certain situations. <laughs> There are going to be other parameters that are going to affect that though as well. We'll just leave it there. Now we have attack and we have release. So attack is going to be how quickly the feedback kind of comes in. So you can see I could set this way up at two seconds. It takes longer for that feedback to kind of come in. Let's do something really dramatic here. It goes all the way up to six seconds, I believe. You can see it takes a lot longer for it to come in rather than if I was way down here at 150 milliseconds. It's almost instant when I press the button that it just ramps right in. Okay, so we'll set that somewhere around, I don't know, maybe 500 milliseconds-ish or 600, whatever, just somewhere in there. Release is gonna be how long before the feedback goes away after I release it. Again, we could set that way up at six seconds. Right, so that even if I let go of the chord, we still we see we're still going to get that long release time. So very cool. I mean, very flexible. We can really get creative with this. Purpose of this video isn't so much to show you all the ways you can use it rather than to show you what it's capable of. Now, the dry kill level, uh, dry kill would be that the dry signal is not going to be there anymore. So it, when it sets off, the dry level works, right? So I can play a chord. Obviously, there's my dry signal. Now, I can bring that dry level down. You'll notice that as soon as I engage the feedback or the dry level dropped way down. Not really natural sounding, but it might be cool for an effect. Whereas when I had it all the way up here, it doesn't kill it. We still hear that dry level whereas that knocks it back. Now, dry level will not be useful at all once I put dry kill on because the second I engage the feedbacker, we lose that dry signal. We get just the feedback. So this is no longer going to be a necessary parameter and isn't going to have any effect. And then the always on dry kill means no more dry sound. This is really cool for maybe some Ebo type effects. You know, maybe random onset's not great for that, but something such as this. Oh, 
almost like some swelling effects. So very cool. This is really well thought out. I mean, the folks at Line 6 really gave this a lot of thought and gave us a lot of tweakability and it's going to be very useful and a lot of fun to mess around with. So the reference is going to determine which note is going to be prioritized within a chord when we play it. So when set to lowest, you know, in this case, it's going to always work off of in this A power chord, this low A note, but if I set it to loudest, it may not. It's going to be a little bit more random maybe in, in whatever we actually hit the loudest is going to be prioritized of what note it sets the feedback off of. Very, very cool. The silence threshold is going to set the level that the threshold has to be above before feedback is generated. So if I have this set really low, even when I hit very quietly, I'm going to get feedback. But if I set that very high, you'll notice that when I hit softly, I'm not surpassing the threshold necessary to get feedback. So if I even had this on all the time, we could be playing very dynamically and soft. Now I need to probably set that somewhere around here. And I could control it with my playing rather than with the foot switch. So again, very cool. I mean, we can set this however we want. If it's not a feature or a parameter that we need, we can simply set it appropriately and use the parameters that we do need. Keep in mind, I have the feedback gaming on 10, so there's some kind of out of control things going on. I just want to be able to let you hear how it sounds when it's always triggering. Onset threshold is only going to work when we're set to random onset up here as far as I understand. And it's going to set the threshold of onsets that cause changes to the feedback note. So lower values here are going to increase the sensitivity to plucking and strumming so that as we're holding feedback, as I hit the strings, it could actually change the randomness of what type of feedback we hear. <laughs> So every time I hit, the potential is there for it to really change a lot. Now, if I crank that up, it's going to be reduced sensitivity to that. Something you'll have to play around with, but it's good to know what it actually is doing. So the offset threshold is going to work with rapid drops in the signal level. And however, you know, here a, a 2 dB drop in the signal level will quickly kill the feedback to prevent any kind of warbling effects, but we can also set that way down here so that it would take a 40 dB drop for it to kind of instantly kill the feedback. So that's another setting we can use and mess around with. It's hard to really show all of these because they're going to work only in certain situations and sometimes in conjunction with other parameters. Now, retrigger is really interesting. It's not really a parameter as it says in the release notes. So what I can do is I can come down here to retrigger. We're going to right click it and we're going to assign it to foot switch eight. And again, we want to change this to a momentary switch so that when I press that, it will go between the dashes and trigger. So what's going to happen here is it's going to allow me as I'm holding the feedback, kind of re-trigger and have it do more random moves. So re-trigger can be used with all different modes, but how it's going to work is going to be dependent on where we're set. So mid to low or low to high modes up here, uh, pressing the re-trigger switch will cause the feedbacker to descend to lower harmonics. So I'm going to use two feet here. <laughs> So you can see how I could actually control when it drops down. When I'm set, setting it to random trigger or random offset, pressing it's gonna cause the feedback to randomly choose a different harmonic.
So very cool feature that once we have the feedback or engage, we can actually use this to re-trigger the note without having to hit our strings again. Very cool. You can really see how many possibilities there's going to be with this. And then in any of the other modes, pressing the re-trigger switch will just cause the feedback to regenerate at the mode selected frequency. So lots of possibilities there. And then trails is gonna be just like anything else. When we have the feedbacker turned on, when we turn it off, the feedback will keep going rather than just abruptly stop if we have it turned off. So what a deep addition to the Helix. There's lots going on there. I would really encourage you to mess around with it. We can do everything from swelling Ebo type effects to any kind of feedback we could desire. Keep in mind, we can also assign different parameters to snapshots, such as the feedback type. If we want to go from random to an octave up, we can snapshot enable that and switch between that as well. So there's lots of possibilities. So I hope that that was a helpful video. I know I didn't really dive into getting creative with it because it's just the video might be six hours long if we did do that. But hopefully now that we understand what each parameter does, it's going to allow you to be able to use this in a very creative way and get what you want out of it while creating your tone. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and sharing your time with me. I really do appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to leave you with a demo video for my brand new Brit 2203 Ultimate preset on the Line 6 Marketplace. It's a full-blown song of mine called Poison and Power featuring Marco Miniman on the drums. Love this tune. And all the tones you hear in here are from my Line 6 Marketplace Brit 2203 Ultimate preset. The link will be below to that if you're so inclined and want to grab a copy of it. Thanks so much for tuning in again. Please like the video, share it with anybody you think would get use or enjoyment out of watching it. Also, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back very soon with some more. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.